So the first initial steps when you're creating teams with Tribe Athletics is Dan and I, the morning after we get done with the second day of team placements, is we sit down, we have the names upside down so we can't see to whom we're looking at, and create teams based on basically just skill. Uh, we start out with 20 plus teams, you break it down based on the levels of stuff that we need, that breaks it down to 15 teams. Um, spend about five or six hours on Monday starting that process. Then we let it sit in our brains for a couple days and then we reconvene today and Wednesday, a few days later, and then we start putting the people on the bus. And then after we did that this morning, a few hours later, we start putting the people on the right seats on the bus. It's the process to having the highest probability of having the highest score when we're hitting the floor. So skill does matter, yes. Maturity does matter. Yes, but putting all that stuff together is what makes the full team. Then once you create the teams, then you got to find the coaches of those teams. Some of the challenges that we face this year versus the previous years is there's a lot more children. We've had about a 40 plus percent growth in our business model with our children coming to Tribe Athletics. So one of the adversities, one of the obstacles, one of the roadblocks, if you will, was putting the right people and having those many kids to choose from a bigger pond of kids, which makes it fun for us, but it also can be kind of hectic, especially when you're trying to create what spot for what team. And then after creating those teams, then we fill in like the NBA draft or the NFL draft. Then we have the crossovers. Then we start building the teams and then putting the placement of per skill, per level, per team. For instance, we need a back base on the junior level one. We need a flyer on our senior level two. Like whatever those are, then we're trying to find the players to fit on that particular team. Talking about having crossovers and then going from a D2 gym, which if you recall, um, D2 is just a level of having 125 kids in your program, including prep, 125 or less, you become a D2 gym. Um, I think it's safe to say in 2022-23 that Tribe Athletics will be a D1 gym, which means we'll have more than 125 kids in our program. Um, it's 150-ish just with the elite teams not even counting our prep this year. Um, so that also takes a little into consideration when you're going to crossovers because when you're in D2, you can go down a couple levels. And when you're D1 school, or excuse me, a D1 gym, you can only cross over one level, excluding the six, and you can go down to two. But that's been kind of a, a, a little, kind of a fun thing for us to deal with too. One of the things that we thrive off of and kind of get excited about and a little scared about is putting the coaches on the right teams. Um, number one, we want to look for some stability, some strength, but also the growth. So if you have a coach that has started out on the younger team that's had some more talents or more seasoned, if you will, you want to try to adjust them each time you can. Uh, this year, uh, we had a wonderful, wonderful pool to choose from, is using the coaches to the best of the abilities and then lining them up with the right, correct kids on the right team. As far as placing our coaches on our teams, is that's one of the funnest things Dan and I get to do. And it's probably the longest process of this whole thing is putting the right coaches on the right team. Who learns best together? who can grow together and who can learn from each other together. That process takes a long time because that's putting the right parents with the right children. And for our coaches, we're very blessed to have very, very good, talented, outspoken, witty coaches, but you gotta make sure you don't put water and oil together. So you gotta make sure they're learning from each other, they can adapt together, they can work as a team together. One doesn't go over one and you can tap out. Um, there's situations where last year a couple of our secondary coaches became just as powerful as our head coaches and this year they'll be getting their own new wings and their own teams to spread out that's the goal is to learn from each other learn from each other and learn from each other so the next step in our process is for the next 12 13 days is we kind of let it sizzle in our minds in our hearts and our souls and try to place the best team with the best coaches from top down together and there'll be some changes made you know, it could be the night before midnight on May 10th. That's when we you know, announce our teams. There could be some changes then. But what we want to do is let it resonate in our minds and then look at it again on a piece of paper and then look at it again together as a team. And then Dan and I are in constant contact, 365, 24 seven, like especially over the next 12 days. Then we figure it out, then we place the teams. So we let it simmer in our minds for the next 10, 12 days of, is this the best possible team? from the coaches to the newest person to 
be competitive for the 22-23 season. Quick side note, as an uh, advantage or disadvantage, I'm also a parent uh, of a child in the program. So the anticipation, the angst, the excitement of what team, um, who's my coach, um, how are we gonna work together as a team, who else is on my team, um, will I be excited, will I be disappointed? Um, as parents, we get excited for our child, but it's also very important that we teach and train our children. So we, and I, and us as parents, is we do the best job we can to set our children up to keep the excitement. No matter what new team you are placed on, team placements, no matter who your coaches are, at this point in time in your life, in your skill level, in your maturity level, in your age level, that is the best suited team that you could possibly be on for this year. Also, as far as being a parent, let's talk about the children that are disappointed or not satisfied with their placements. If we coach our kids to know that disappointment is how you look at things, and that's just what's inside of you or what you're feeling for the moment. So if we can direct them and teach and train our children that there is no disappointments, you're placed on a D1 Tribe Athletics team with the best coaches, the best program, in my humble opinion, out there. So how we react is how our kids are going to react. Um, as far as the team placement program, when we uh, opened up April 23rd and April 24th of this year for our team placements, we added a sheet uh, to every child and athlete that came through our, our process. And at the end of their placement uh, tryout, their new skills, or wanted to show off the skills that they've been getting over the last three to six months or even the last year. If there was any question about the level that they circled versus the level that our coaches and staff circled, is that we had a little quick intro meeting about here's the level of skill that we believe you are. Here's the level of skill that you think you are. Now, where are you really at? And I think that's going to save some of the kids' disappointments because there was a couple conversations that we had to have of you know what levels they were and how incredible jumps can get bigger and you know are you on a level two and you now you think you're level three. I I want to also add to when we create these teams, it's hours and hours of time, which is really not the point, but it's putting the right people in the right place to have the best possibility of having the most success we can. It's not selfish. It's very, very due diligence. We do our homework, and then we think about it and change it as many times as we possibly can. We believe that if we take our time each and every year to create these teams, and take our times each and every year to make them better, and then make our coaches better, and our staff better, and our tumbling class better, and our specialty classes better, that every time that we touch a kid that's coming in to the intro of our star class, or our tiny classes, by the time they get to a level six, they'll be walking, talking, doing all the same thing. That's why it's so important that the parents, the grandparents, their brothers and sisters, our staff, our teams, our athletes, understand we're putting them on the best probability of chance to become winners. During the process of starting out seven years ago versus seven years later of creating teams, we've learned a lot. Uh, Dan and I have learned a lot to make the teams even better. Um, and that could come over having a lot more kids to choose from, um, having a bigger pool of kids to choose from, or even more talent, if you will. Um, each time and each year that we get better and better and better at this, we believe that we understand what our teams need. It's not just every single person that has to tumble. It's, it's not every single person has to be the back base or side base or secondary or main. It's just putting all those pieces together to make it perfect for the team needs. And that's kind of how we created We Over Me, is that we got to forget about the selfishness part of this and make it a team-oriented concept. Team. Together, everybody accomplishes more. I know we're going to see a lot of you tonight at the Festival of Feathers uh, for our annual banquet, which will be awesome to celebrate all of our accolades and successes that we have through the year. Uh, this Sunday, uh, we also have the Summit Send-Off, which is going to be amazing. I also have a couple surprises that we're going to show, so we do some showcases out there, which will be cool. Uh, the following Friday uh, will be the final push, uh, which stay tuned for that. It will be amazing. I'll stop. There. No, it's great. <laughs>